All right, everyone. All right, I'm back to talk about the Pisces Rashi. Okay, so this is part of the course on the Rashis of Jyotish. And <clears throat> so this is just going through the commentary on the what Brihat Prashar said on the each of the 12 zodiac signs. And I'm going to give a few examples so that people who are learning astrology and, you know, maybe you're familiar with what the Western zodiac signs, how they're described. But in Jyotish, they're described a little bit differently, and in many ways, they're a lot more accurate because they come from like an actual Shastra or a Sutra, an authoritative text, whereas a lot of the, not that Western astrology is uh, not able to work, but a lot of their traditions are unclear. You know what I mean? A lot of, There's a lot more secrecy in those occult traditions, and a lot of that, the authoritative texts are now missing or hiding in the Vatican or something like that, right? Um, but... Okay, so basically this is the sutra from Brihat Parashara Hora Shastra. <clears throat> Pisces, the Mina Rashi, or the fish Rashi, is two fish sticking to each other, tail with face. The fish Rashi is day strong, meaning it's strong during the day time rather than night time. It is watery. So watery means um, emotional, means feeling oriented, means sensitive. Uh, water is about having like a healthy emotional state and healthy psychology and spirit, healthy, uh, healthy sense of spirit. Being able to, you know, you put water in a cup, it becomes a cup. You put it over here, it becomes that. So they ha Pisces has that kind of watery quality. Richly endowed with sattva. Um, so... Pisces is actually the most sattvic sign, the most inspired sign, the most um, yeah, richly endowed with sattva, the guna of uh, light and harmony and truth and everything. Um, and that's most likely the case most of the time, although you will see that since Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac, has to do with letting go and cleansing karma, you'll see that it also can get one in involved in some not-so-sattvic endeavors. And then you have self-abiding. So self-abiding means like... It abi uh, it's not the ego self, but abiding in yourself, in like the divine self, you know? Um, and then moving in water is, is a really interesting one. Um, moving in water is, well, that's what fishes do. They're moving in water. But it also means moving through emotions, moving through a watery realm. You know, that's what Pisces is good for. Feeling oriented, feeling things out. It's footless, so it's not biped, it's not quadruped, it's it's not even a mini-footed or an insect one, it's footless, so it's really unique. It's the only sign that is 100% footless. Pisces is probably the most unique sign out of the whole zodiac. Um, it's, it's, you know, Capricorn was half footless, remember? But it still had those four, the quadruped first part. Pisces is completely surrendered, completely open, it has no feet to stand on. It's just being moved. Um... And truly, <clears throat> what does it mean that Mars and Venus are both exalted in footless Rashis? Well, I think it means that some of the most powerful choices or actions or things we can do as humans is not so much how we act, but how we what we decide to be moved by. Because footless means being moved by the waters. So it is each soul's decision and choice what they will be moved by. And Pisces has to do with what you will be moved by. Um, that's kind of, so when Pisces is afflicted, one's not as easily moved or as easily inspired or as easily open and, oh, wow. You know, they're not able to see that as much. When it's really strong, they are able to see that a lot. And then it's medium body, so it's normal body sign. We covered that. Standing in the north, uh, all the water signs deal with the northern direction. And then it's rising both ways. So again, it's just so, like Pisces is like Taoism. Pisces is like Zen. Pisces is that Jupiter energy that is up but also down. It's those who know, don't speak. Those who speak, don't know. It's all that sort of vibe. That's what Pisces is about. Um, and it's ruled by Jupiter. And Jupiter is, according to Jaimini, one who is all-knowing and one who understands all, but is not speaking much. <laughs> so Pisces is a very wise sign. One of my favorite signs, uh, sayings, sorry. <clears throat> one of my favorite sayings about Pisces is, or about wisdom, is wisdom is having a lot to say and not saying it. So that's what Pisces has to do with. Living it rather than saying it. You see, Mercury is debilitated there, so they're not. it's not a sign of speech or of, oratorical prowess. It's a sign of experience and surrendering, going beyond the words. 
All right, so now I'll show you guys some examples of that. Okay, so examples of the Pisces Rashi. So this right here is Ramana Maharshi, super uh, enlightened being. You know, Pisces is the sign of getting enlightened. Pisces is the sign of the, like he said, the most like richly endowed with sattva. It's the most sattvic or the most inspired, most spiritually like growing and sort of flowering sign. Um, and it has to do with constantly moving up and elevation and, you know, ascending and all of that. And Jupiter there, the Lord of that sign shows that that's a very strong sign and that sign is going to work well for him. And he's a very, he had a very strong Jupiter. So wisdom and contemplation, this guy basically had an enlightening experience when he was like 16 or 17 and never really fell from that state. And so his entire life, he was very happy and very self-realized. Um, and he was also very quiet and would not speak often. And the water signs are said to be mute signs. So Ramana Maharshi would say silence is real eloquence. And, uh, you know, like I said, Jupiter and Pisces has to do with those who know don't speak and those who speak don't know. So there's a very Taoist kind of Zen um, contemplative quality that Pisces has. Now, this is the chart of, of Jean Lafitte. He was a famous pirate. And so he, what's interesting is his ruling, his Aries ruling planet is Mars. It's in Gemini in the third, which is like peers and brothers, like we talked about earlier and having like, you know, that's what pirates do. They have their little company and their group and their peers. But he had his Mars aspected by Venus. And that's an exalted Venus in Pisces. Pisces is the sea. Venus is vehicles and conveyances, so therefore pirate ships, and it's exalted. So he had very good exalted karma to experience as a pirate. He's one of the most legendary pirates of all time. And he fought on all different sides. He was very like, you know, he was, you know, he didn't go play by the rule book too much, which is the Gemini and Mercury and Virgo energy. Instead, he did what was good that he knew was good deep down and ignored the rules of men. See, like Gemini and Virgo had more to do with the rules of men and the law and like lawyers and the worldly rules and the instruction manual and all that. And Jupiter signs, Pisces and Sag have more to do with the infinite, the God's laws, the divine laws, the universal laws, which you already know is good deep down. So he was like that. He would do good, even though it wasn't good in the sense of the nation or went by the rule book. Now this is the chart of, um, of uh, um, uh, just a friend of mine who's just a normal guy. So it's good to look at the charts of normal guys. And he's just a monk. Um, he had an enlightening experience when he was very young in his twenties and he's became a monk and he just, you know, that Jupiter, that very strong Jupiter energy. Again, it's retrograde. It's really strong. It's when a planet's retrograde, when Jupiter is, it means he's closer to the earth and his rays are, really hitting the earth as closely and as powerfully as possible. Very bright. Basically when he was born at night, Jupiter was very, very bright. Um, and so he's brilliant and he's a very smart guy. He's creative. He's written, um, he's written some children books. They're actually adult books. They're adult children books. They're like adult books, but kind of a children book. And, you know, Jupiter rules children and all of that as well. And this guy, you know, he's just got that very like priestly, faithful devotional kind of quality that you'll see with a lot of really strong Jupiter and Pisces people like Ramana Maharshi. And so he just wakes up in the morning and chanting and, you know, celibate and drug free and just very good guy and, you know, very disciplined and all that. Now here's a chart of a very ugly Pisces person because Pisces isn't always so saintly and beautiful because Pisces is a sign of letting go of your karma and cleansing your karma. So this guy was a murderer, John Wayne Gacy, and he killed a lot of people. And you see how he has a really afflicted Pisces. So it's almost like he had to do all that just to be done with it and just to be cleansed of some awful karma. Mercury is debilitated. Moon is there. And then sun, when sun and K2 are together, they shame any other planet. So Mercury and moon are ashamed. And so that shows when Mercury and moon are afflicted, you get a lot of mental illnesses. And so he was definitely mentally sick. This is the chart of Meher Baba. Meher Baba is a great uh, enlightened master. 
and he had his son in Mercury in Pisces, and he was very Piscean in his nature. But what's fascinating is that he also observed silence for 43 years. And the water signs are said to be mute signs. Like I was saying about Ramana Maharshi and eloquence, like Ramana Maharshi said, silence is real eloquence. Well, Mary Baba had kind of the same approach where he dictated massive amounts of books and taught and all this stuff. But he actually did it all silent using an alphabet board and then using gestures, um, which his disciples slowly learned. So it's kind of cool how he worked with his Mercury and Pisces there. And this is my chart. I'm a Pisces rising. I am much more of a watery contemplative type of person. Um, I'm not great at multitasking because you see that Mercury, although he's very, very good, he's overcoming the, the debilitation by being within one degree of the Lagna with the Lord and exalting the Navamsha chart, but still not that great at like typical classical worldly Mercury stuff. But if I do the contemplation, the meditation, the pranayama and all my Kriya Yoga stuff, and I wake up and have a good meditation for at least a half an hour, then I can make all that Mercury stuff work well. That's kind of cool because it's like Jupiter is boosting Mercury. So I hope these examples are good for you guys. Um, and I, you know, this comes to the end of our Pisces of our, sorry, of our Rashis of Joe Tish course. So this covered all the Rashis and, you know, I made this mostly for my tutoring students so that they could learn about this, so that we don't have to waste time going over the same things. And I get kind of tired of saying the same things over and over. And so, uh, they can learn from this and now everyone else in the YouTube world can also learn from this for free. And if you want to learn astrology seriously, you should consider getting some tutoring with me um, because I do that really well. <laughs> no, and I'm doing a, like I do, I really like to do one-on-one -on -one tutoring basically where it's kind of more Jupiterian. It's more traditional way of doing it. Um, you know, you would sit with your teacher and learn one-on-one -on -one in oral fashion, have a conversation about the chart and have a back and forth. That's how I like to do the tutoring. And, um, you know, a lot of people I've tutored are also famous astrologers themselves in their own right now. So that's kind of like my little plug for getting tutoring. And I will teach more official full courses later. I have uh, so much knowledge on the nakshatras that I'm just sitting on right now. It's just insane. And... I really want to teach a course on it, but it might take a minute for my little weak Mercury to get all that together. But the uh, the stuff I want to teach in the next chapter is just crazy good. Um, and I think it will blow a lot of people's minds um, on how to actually use next chapters in research in like in, in charts, like in really deep ways, how you heal with all this, um, you know, so. All right, so you guys, uh, if you got any questions about it, please let me know. If there's anything else you want me to cover, um, I think the next few videos I'll do, I might just work on like Avashtas, do some videos of plants and their Avashtas, and also just do some random like technical chart examples. All right, take care, you guys.